once we have our song done and we want to bounce the file down or get a left and right stereo file, like an MP3 file you put in your iPod or your um, MP3 player, we want to get this file ready to go for mastering. So here's how it works in Pro Tools. There are two ways to do it, two schools of thought. Now this is the way you do it inside Pro Tools that I guess most common people do this is go to bounce a disc, you go here to disc, you get a dialog box. It says bounce. Now bounce means we're going to take this information, let the song play through internally inside the computer, and then it's going to make a file that's going to be that MP3 file or whatever you want to make it to be actually. So we need to get a bounce source. And here you can select your source. Here you can have the main stereo output, or you can select any source you'd like to. Any one of our, you can get this um, drum verb as a bounce file. You can get the vocal delay or just the vocal group as a bounce file, or the background as a bounce file. So it's a cool way to get extra stuff. In case you want to do a remix or something, you can just select, let's say, a group of just the vocals and say, I want that for a remix. Take that file, bounce it out, give it to someone, and they can do a remix with that. Let's give them the tempo. Then we also have the file type, which is WAV or SD2, Sound Designer 2 file. It's common for Pro Tools. And then we have an AIFF file, MP3, and a QuickTime file. So in our case right now, we just want a WAV file. Also, we have different file formats. So formats mean that, for example, the first one says mono summed. This means I have a left and a right audio files, and they would be combined together to become one mono file. The next one is multiple mono files. Multiple mono files mean that we're going to have a left and a right file, two separate files, that we can use and put them both into the session if you'd like to for mastering. I prefer this. It's much more accurate, and we can do more with two mono files. And we also have the stereo interleave, which means we'd have this one file, but it would be two files, left and right, combined into one file, and you would have access to both of them. Okay. Now, below that, we have our bit depth. Now, bit depth is important. You don't want to, say if you did a 24-track session, 24-bit session, we'll say, and you had it at 48 hertz. You can't burn a CD from this, so you have to go to 44.1 and then go to 16. So we can go down, but we can't go from 16 up, okay? But we can go from 16 to 8, and we can go from 24 down to 16 or 8 if you want to go from that bit conversion, but we can't go up from this point. And this session is a 16-bit session, so we'll leave it that way. Our conversion is good, and right here we have it says uh, convert after bounce. Now what this means is that once the song stops playing, it will start to calculate and make that file, that WAV file that we want to have. Or the two WAV files, in this case, the two multiple mono files. Convert during bounce means the computer will do more work. It'll try to calculate the file and then bounce at the same time. I prefer to go after because it's less problems all the way. Now once it does the bounce, you can have Pro Tools import after bounce. That means we'll import this file after bounce into your session. So what I can do here, I'll say bounce. I'll get a dialog box right here, and in this box I already have a folder set up for it for master. So this is my master. I would say, okay, I'll name the song, and then I'd press save. Now Pro Tools will start playing the song back, give me the time remaining from the time that I've started to where the song will end. And then at that point, it will stop. I want to stop right now. I don't need to do this. We're going to do what I prefer to do, which is I prefer to have the song play the same way, but play it right here in front of me and select the new track to bounce to. Now you'll see here I have most of my outputs, all my summing amps, my auxiliary amps and my masters are going to my mix bus. They're all signed to mix buses. These mix buses are uh, all going to this one main one right here. And that's the mix bus. That's the summing that we're going to, not my master. But here my master, my master is going to the mix bus. So I think it was the mix bus here in the master, then it appears here in this bus here. So on the master here I have, I've got a Bond Factory compressor, which is the BF76. I also have the Advanced Institute Research. This is a width plugin. So it provides more width. It makes it wider for stereo fields for me. I have to have a nice wide field. I have to have a big wide mix. It's always good. And then 
Uh, this is a maxim, which I'm not going to use. This is more like a limiter. I won't use this now. I'm just later on when I start mastering. So now, um, I want to make a new track. So I make a new track, and we're going to record to this track. We're going to record the whole song down as one track. It's going to be a stereo order track. We're going to press create, and it happens right here. I'm going to name the track. I'm going to call it uh, TIS, take it slow, and I'm call it the bounce. There you go. Perfect. And next, I want to make the input. So the input's got to be, of course, my mix bus. Since everything's going to make bus. You see this here? They're almost the same identical, except this is an auxiliary track and this is an audio track. So I'm going to mute this for one. And I'm recording everything on the disc track. I put this in stereo there. That's good. And now I want to record. So let me get my transport window open. And next, I will record. I'll press record here. And I'll record that track. The reason why I do it this way is because I can get the plugins to act properly. The ins and outs, the parts I want to go in and out will act properly. Automation will act right. I don't like to use the other way because sometimes I feel it doesn't give me the right accurate feel. And it doesn't sound right once in a while. So I prefer to hear it go down and let it go down the way I want to go down. So you notice we're recording it on that one track. Now after I've recorded it down, and I did, if I did the whole song, I can do it right now. I'll, press, I'll stop this here, close this up. We will see that track. And it's right here. This is my bounce right there. I'll make it bigger for you to see. And this is my bounce track. Now the reason why I do it this way too is because if I want to fix something later on, let's say I want to fix, I like the way the uh, vocals came out or something, and I want to maybe make them a little bit higher in a certain section. Well, I can go right to that section and say, go right here. I want to go there. And I say, okay, now I want, to I want to bounce from here on. Just bounce that one section out. Rather than have to go back again and go do the internal bounce with Pro Tools. This makes it much, much easier for me to do. And there's less, less problems at the same time as well. So I can do it that way. It makes it much more easier. And then I got my bounce file. Now from this file here, I can make a master. And we'll continue on the next lesson.